Okay, we are beginning our unit on two-dimensional forces. Um, so yeah, it's a continuation of what we've been doing so far. So we're going to look at two really quick examples of things, and tomorrow in class you're going you're gonna to work through some of the worksheets on this. I am going to quiz you uh, over whether or not you watch the video, so just, just be ready for that. So, 2D forces. Let's start off with our simplest possible case. We'll make it more complicated in a second. Let's say we have a block of mass 10 kilograms and we pull on that block with a string and the force that we put on that string is 100 newtons. How does the block accelerate? So what we need to do to figure out how this thing accelerates is to look at all of the forces acting on it, not just that force. So down, we know we have the weight, and we know that doesn't depend on any of the other forces, so we can go ahead and say that that's 100 newtons. This upward force though, well this angled force, let's say it's 30 degrees, um, changes things for us because some of that force pulls up on the mass and some of that force pulls over. Now we're going to have to do our sines and our cosines again. So the over part is 100 cosine 30 which is uh, 86.6 newtons. The upward part is 100 sine 30 which is 50 newtons. <clears throat> In addition to that we also have the normal force pushing up. But we don't know how much the normal force is. <clears throat> so let's redraw, let's redraw our mass. And instead of drawing that angle thing, let's just draw all the components. So I have my force in the x direction. Make that look like an x. It's 86.6 newtons. I got weight down, 100 newtons. I have my force in the y, that's 50 newtons, and I have my normal force. Now, we know that this block does not slide into the ground or, or pop up off of it. So I know that the up forces and the down forces have to equal each other. What that tells me is that the normal force, oops, sorry. What that tells me is that the normal force and the force in the y have to both add up to 100. In order for that to happen, the normal force is going to be 50 newtons. So, let's draw this one more time. Since we know that these things have to cancel out, all we have is 10 kilograms being pulled with a force in the x direction of 86.6 newtons. So, the sum of our forces here equals mass times acceleration. So, the sum of my forces is... 86.6 newtons and that's equal to 10 times the acceleration so the acceleration comes out to be 8.7 meters per second squared now to make things even more complicated sorry what if we had friction What if mu static was 0.5 and mu kinetic was 0.25? What would happen then? So, looking at our mass, um, again, we have our mass, we have 86.6 pulling this way, weight is pulling down with 100 force in the y is 50 and our normal force is now 50. It's not equal to the weight because the block is not pressing up against the surface so much and we have friction pulling back. Now static friction is going to be 0.5 times 50 
so static friction is going to be 25 newtons and kinetic friction is going to be 0.25 times 50 or 12.5 newtons so looking at this <clears throat> 86.6 pulls against, well, it's going to beat static friction, so it moves. So, I know these cancel out, and I'm left with 86.6 newtons this way, and 12.5 newtons in this direction. So, overall, we've got 86.6 minus 12.5, that's uh, 74.1 newtons. So MA equals my net force. 10 times the acceleration equals 74.1. And the acceleration comes out to be 7.4 meters per second squared. So the really important thing about this is that a force at an angle has a Y component that changes our normal force. Some of the force accelerates us forward some of the force lifts up and changes the normal force. Uh, the other thing that we have are static problems. These are nice. Because with static problems, the acceleration is zero and nothing moves. So with a really simple static problem, we would have a sine hanging by two wires. Let's say that one is at an angle of 90 degrees, uh, but this one is at an angle of, well, it can't be 90 degrees. Sorry. Let's say that one's at an angle of 30, and just to make things interesting, we'll put this one at an angle of 60 degrees. And, and let's go ahead and say that we have a 10 kilogram box. So, what I'd like is tension in each string. Find each tension. So, for our 10 kilogram block, let's redraw this in an, in an acceptable way. We have tension one pulling in that direction. Pardon the drawing and tension 2 pulling this way and mg pulling down. Now we know mg is 100 newtons. What we need to do is take tension 1 and tension 2 and look at their components. Well if that angle is 60 then this is tension 1 times the sine of 60 and this tension 1 times the sine of 60 is here and that is going to be Tension 1 times the cosine of 60. Tension 2, I'm sort of busy drawing. Um, let's draw the triangle this way. If that's 30, this is 60, and this is 30. So I have tension 2 times the cosine of 30 that way, and tension 2 times the sine of 30 this way. Let's redraw that because it's really hard to see. Let's make it a dot. Down, we have mg, 100 newtons. In, in the direction to the right, we have tension 1 times the cosine of 60 degrees. Up, we have tension 1 times the sine. Oops, sorry. Tension 1 times the sine. of 60 degrees. Also pulling up we have tension 2 times the sine of 30 and pulling over we have tension 2 times the cosine of 30. So we have two equations from this but the big idea here is that the down forces need to equal the up forces. Okay, So 100 newtons has to equal T2 sine 30 plus T1 sine 60. 
but I've got two unknowns in that equation, so I also need to look at the x direction. This has to equal this, because the acceleration is zero here. So t2 cosine 30 is equal to t1 cosine 60. I know that they have to equal each other out. So if we solve for t2, we've got t2 is equal to t1 cosine 60 over cosine 30. So what I can do, and you're going to hate this because it's a lot of math, I got 100 newtons equal to, I'm going to substitute that in for T2. T1 cosine 60 times the sine of 30 divided by the cosine of 30 plus T1 sine 60. Now the easiest thing to do is just turn everything into a number. So I have 100 equals, all right, so I have 100 equals T1 times the cosine of 60, which is 0.5, times the sine of 30, which is 0.5, divided by the cosine of 30, which is 0.87, plus T1 times 0.87. So 100 equals 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 0.87. T1 times 0 0.29 plus T1 times 0.87. We can add those together. I have uh, 100 equals 100 equals T1 times 1.16. Uh, so T1 is equal to 86.2 newtons. And we can plug that in over here to get T2. So 86.2 newtons times cosine of 60 divided by cosine of 30 gives me T2 as 49.7 newtons. These static problems take a lot of work, so you're going to have to stick with it.